Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Years ago, my good buddy Pete shared a trick or a tool that completely changed the way I did carpentry, and that was hyper adhesive. Uh, as many of you know, I use this for all of my mitered casing, and I get great results from it. It's one of the best secrets uh, that anyone ever shared with me, and I've been using it for a handful of years. It's made me uh, way more productive, efficient, and increased my quality. The crazy thing is I still get a lot of messages from guys who are struggling to figure out how to use this product with clam clamps. They're not getting the results that I'm getting. So in this video, I'm getting ready to assemble a bunch of window casing and I'm going to take you through my process and show you some of the things that you need to watch out for with this product. Before we get going, I want to show you, this was just a, a one by four that I assembled the other day for a different video that I did assembled with Hyper here. Whenever you have a nice big piece of poplar, you can get a lot of strength using Hyper adhesive. The particular casing that I'm using on this house is a very thin casing. There's a lot less meat on it. Now, I've already cased all of the doors in this house and all the windows upstairs using Hyper and Clam Clamps to assemble everything. I have not had a single miter break on me during the installation process. I can carry it around, bend it, abuse it, and they, they hold up. So even with a thin casing like this that just doesn't have a lot to work with, you can actually barely even get a biscuit in this casing. It's super thin. The Hyper works for me. So that's what we're doing. Let's go right into it and uh, I'll give you some tips for using this. You know what, on second thought, before we get started, I wanna show you how strong this actually is. Uh, again, I assembled this joint last week and one of the key things to realize with hyper adhesive is that it cures by reacting with the moisture in the air. And if you give it more time to cure, you will get a stronger joint. Now you can put the clam clamp on it and remove the clamp uh, in 30 seconds to a minute and it'll hold the joint together. But you'll get maximum strength if you assemble your casings and if you can leave them sit for a day, they'll be a lot stronger. But this one's been sitting for a while. Let's just try and break this miter. All it's got is hyper in it. Again, no biscuits, just hyper on this. That's making my hand hurt. So we've completely smashed in the end on here. It's just not breaking. There we go, finally. So I hope that little demonstration made you a believer on the power of this glue. It's incredibly strong. Um, so let's get into assembling some casing here. One of the first things you wanna make sure that you do is make sure that your glue is hot enough and that it's had plenty of time to heat up. You may have the new style gun that's got the cord plugged into the gun. Uh, this is the old style here where it's on the cradle and it's got a green light when it's good to go and it'll have a red light whenever it's warming up. I like to give it at least a half hour to get nice and hot all the way through the tube. Um, and then whenever it comes out, you should get a nice clear glue. That's what you want. With the Hyper, you do want to use a cam action miter clamp. These here are clam clamps invented by Jim Chestnut. These are purchased directly from him and I'm not even sure if he is actively selling these anymore. If you can't get clam clamps, and by the way, you do have to call directly to place your order for these. If you can't get clam clamps, if you live in Canada or somewhere like that where you can't get these because he only ships them inside the United States, go for a Miter Max clamp 
Woodcraft sells them, Amazon sells them. They're manufactured in China and they're sold under a couple different brand names now, but you can find those online and they also work well for this. Well, we're actually gonna start with a casing set that is actually cut at a compound angle. If you haven't seen my other videos on rolling miters, this one had the casing or the jam proud of the drywall, so it'll actually sit up an eighth of an inch off of the table and you'll see as I do this that even though it's cut at that compound angle whenever I use the clam clamp it'll automatically compress it and it's going to lift it up to that correct position where it should be so here you see we'll tighten it down and now this leading edge is actually lifted up off the table uh, here's the other side uh, these casing sets are actually getting an apron, so we're only doing the top corners will be mitered and then the bottom cuts are square cut. But uh, if you can see that, this miter is really ugly right now because it's sitting flat on the table. But as you kind of squeeze it with the clam clamp a little bit, you just want to make indentations and then it's going to naturally lift up where it's supposed to be. Release that and then we'll put a nice even bead across the whole miter and the key here is you do want to get a nice bead across the whole thing so you're getting as much coverage as possible but you don't want an absolute ton of squeeze out whenever you're doing this i did this one super slow bad job lining it up but crank it it'll tighten up and what you'll see whenever you do this is the squeeze out will start out clear and then in a matter of seconds it'll start to interact with the air and turn into more of a milky color as it gets hard. Here we are after just a couple seconds. Uh, you can see the squeeze out here and watch how it literally just rolls right off. It comes, comes right off. That's an ideal amount of squeeze out. Now sometimes you get in these little crevices here and that is where a dull chisel is nice. It will uh, can go along there and that squeeze out, you can just work it right off of there. and you're good to go. Here's the other side. Again, I would say this is a pretty ideal amount of squeeze out. See how it's not like normal wood glue, which would be smearing all over the place. After a few seconds, it gets hard and uh, it just breaks, breaks right off. That's one of the great things about this hyper adhesive. Works great for paint grade or stain grade. So then you don't have to leave the clamps on, just pop the clamps off. I mentioned uh, that this was cut at a compound angle and you notice how the leading edge is sitting off the table here. That is because this was cut for this window over here in the casing. You're not gonna be able to see it very well, but the casing is about an eighth inch proud of the drywall. So we rolled that miter. If you wanna see more on how to do that, see my uh, other videos on cutting perfect miters or rolling the miters. Uh, but let's get into it a little bit more. I'll show you some more tricks. Something important, I had uh, someone recently reached out to me and was having problems uh, assembling the casings and they were trying to assemble the miters by hand just by pushing them together. And you can do that in rare situations, but you're gonna wanna always... I recently had somebody that reached out to me that was really struggling with using the hyper adhesive, and they were actually trying to use the adhesive and then assemble the pieces just by pushing together by hand. You can do that. I do that with my um, handrail returns for stair handrail and stuff like that. Or occasionally if I have a weird piece of scribed casing that I can't use a clam clamp with because it's beveled at a weird angle, weird angle, I'll push it together manually. But you really want to be using one of these cam action miter clamps because it gives you clamping pressure and it also really evenly distributes the glue, clamps it together really quickly, gives you a lot of strength. The beautiful thing about using this glue system with the miter clamps is that even a novice can do this. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and line up your miter so that you've got your end points on the, the front and back of the miter not lined up nicely and everything's on the same plane. Then go ahead and take your clamp and push it into place. 
you want to try and kind of pull it hard up against the wood that way these teeth dig in and this is really important make sure everything is nice and flush and give the miter clamp a half turn and what we're doing at this point is we're allowing the teeth on the clamp to indent into the wood what that's going to do is then whenever we put our glue on and we go to clamp this together when we clamp it together it's going to auto align and go back to the correct position this is a very important step in the process always pre-clamp first then glue and then do your final clamping so at this point and again if you're not familiar with these clamps you can see the teeth along here and we made these indentations in the wood where the clamp will go right into position in those pinholes. So, all right, here we go. I like to uh, leave the clamp in position on one piece of wood. Then we'll take our glue on the other piece and just give yourself a nice even bead. And you gotta work quickly whenever you do this. Go ahead, get it lined up, push it together, and clamp it all the way. And you'll see that glue squeeze out a little bit and you're good to go and move on to the next one. Get that lined up, put our clamp on it, pull the clamp in so the teeth dig in nicely. Give it a half turn, release it. And this is my free piece. That's about how much glue I use. Get it lined up, squeeze it all the way. Now you may wonder like how quickly should you take the clamp off? And you should be able to take it off pretty quickly. I like to see the glue be in that kind of uh, milky colored hardened state before I take the clamp off. You can see where it's peeling off easy. If you're at the point where it still smears whenever you rub your finger over it. Uh, like to give it a little bit longer, but usually if you're doing a window, by the time you get around to your fourth miter, uh, you can start to take the clamps off the first, first miter. So here you can see that's looking pretty good. That's peeling off pretty easy. Cleans up nice. And then again, definitely over here. I do definitely find with this particular style of casing, I like to use this dull chisel just to kind of get in there and it pops those little pieces of dried glue off uh, with ease rather than trying to use my fingers to do it. One of the minor details, whenever you do this, uh, whatever assembly your table you're using, you'll get glue squeeze out on the bottom. It's really easy to scrape it off if you keep kind of scraping it off as you go. Um, if you would have left that sit for a day or so, that would have got really hard and it wouldn't have come off as easy. But I kind of try and just keep my table clean as I go and, and keep that glue squeeze out off the table. That way it doesn't mess up the alignment of the future miters either. But uh, let's go ahead, pop these off and I'll show you one other thing that I typically do you do get some squeeze out on the bottom of the miter and i like to take that again that dull chisel and i'll scrape off the bottom also to make sure that the casing is going to sit nice and flat on the wall so if you want the best results and get maximum strength out of your miters where you have the least risk of them breaking assemble a whole bunch of casing at once, a whole bunch of windows and doors in a day. I like to just cut a whole bunch, assemble a whole bunch, and then leave them sit before I nail them off. Come back the next day or even the day after if I've got something else that I'm doing, you'll get great results that way. I know I'm making this look pretty easy, and it is really easy in my mind, and the results that I get, I, I just don't have problems with it but I keep getting messages from guys who are having a lot of problems. So what could some of the potential issues be with this system? Well, one thing to keep in mind again is how large is the wood that you're trying to assemble? 
the more mass of wood that you have that you're gluing together, the stronger the joint is gonna be. Like I said before, this is three and a half inch casing, but it's not a very thick casing and it's got a large area in the center of the profile that's not very thick at all, but I'm still able to get great results with it. However, if you're assembling something like a two and a quarter inch casing, you don't have nearly as much mass of wood there and you're not gonna get nearly the strength on something that small. Same if you were to try to assemble some kind of panel molding or something like that. Uh, if it's just a lot smaller molding, you may struggle to get the results that you want in terms of strength. So what are some of the other things that could be going wrong? Uh, one of the obvious things that you can look at is what species of wood are you using that you are, are trying to join together? I have found over and over again as I've talked to different guys that the hyper glue does not work nearly as well with pine. Now I have used it with pine uh, and it will work, but I will say it doesn't work nearly as well as it does with poplar. This is Liriodendron tulipfera. Um, around here in the United States in the Midwest, we call this poplar. It's actually tulip wood. You guys who live overseas across the pond would know this as tulip wood, but it machines really well and it works really well with hyper in my experience. Pine, not so much. I did a job last year with some one by four material that came pre-primed with what some might call a clay coat. So it was one by four with a really thick primer on it. And the wood species was some form of super fast growth pine. And I was able to do the job with that particular material, which I hardly ever use, uh, with hyper and clam clamps. And I was able to assemble my miters just fine. Um, they definitely weren't as strong and I was careful to make sure the miters had plenty of time to cure out before I stressed them when I installed it. Then I had somebody who was using the same material that I was uh, contact me recently and was just not having any success, was saying that he could not get the miters to hold together. So there's a couple things that can be an issue there in a situation like that. One is you could have some bad glue. Some of you guys uh, have been purchasing glue off of Amazon. I buy glue off Amazon sometimes, uh, but only if I am running out. Most of the time I buy my glue from gluegun.com and I buy it in bulk at about 20 or 30 tubes at a time and they will actually give you a discount on the glue. And I haven't had a bad tube of glue in years. I cannot, it's been at least a few years. I can't remember the last time. So if you're having problems with your glue and you're getting it off Amazon, maybe try one of the bigger glue manufacturers uh, like gluegun.com who I've had great success with. They've treated me really well. Um, and like I said, they even will give me a discount if I call in and ask for it on large orders. So you might try that, but I haven't had any tubes going bad. Now again, remember this glue cures by interacting with the moisture in the air. So if it's not stored properly, that will make the glue go bad. And that's where it used to be that you could get these tubes that the end of the tube would be hardened because it had interacted with the air and you would actually have to like kind of plunge it out. I haven't had that in at least a few years. They kind of redesigned these tubes a little bit, I think, and they eliminated a lot of that issue. Um, now they also ship with a desiccant pack in the bottom of the tube I can feel right here. That helps also absorb any moisture that might be in the packaging itself. So with all that, I think that they figured out how to store this stuff without it going bad. 
That being said, if you warm up your tube with a new tube and it is plenty hot and you dispense it and it's not a very clear liquid material and you have more of a yellowish hue to it, usually whenever you see that yellowish hue, that means you've, you're, you're either not hot enough or the tube is old and somehow it's interacted with that moisture in the air. Sometimes I'll get that. Uh, if I reuse a tube a few times or something like that, but it should be a very clear viscosity whenever you're dispensing it. If it's not, your tube might be bad and that might be part of the issue if your miters are not strong. I do notice when it gets that yellowy material that the glue is not as strong. Now I wanna go back to my friend who was installing this pine one by four clay coated casing. I had installed it without too much issues. It definitely wasn't as strong as popular, but still it took the glue well enough that I could pre-assemble all my casing sets without too much of an issue. And he was having the problem where he couldn't even hardly get the joints to hold together even, much less have any strength. So why could this be? Well, I think it might actually have to do, number one, pine has more of a oily, sappiness to it that I think the glue doesn't like. But the way we're cutting it also can affect that. What blade you're using on the saw. Um, some of you have probably used really sharp blades with a high tooth count. And especially on hardwoods, you notice whenever you cut through the wood, it'll almost create a glassy surface on the end grain of your miter cut that essentially would seal off that end grain. Now, how would that affect the hyper glue? I think that that may actually be causing some guys to have issue because it closes off the end grain whenever they cut it with a really sharp blade with a high tooth count, it glasses it over and then the glue doesn't take as well. I've never had issues with the way I do it, and I always use the same miter saw blade. The blade that I use on my miter saw was recommended to me by my friend Justin quite a few years ago now. It is an FS Tool SM6300. It's a 100 tooth blade, and it's an industrial style blade. And the thing about it is I wouldn't say it has that extreme sharpness that a, lot, that a lot of the box store blades come with and it'll just cut forever and it just goes through this poplar casing and lasts a long time. But the cuts are, are just a little bit rougher on the end grain, I feel like. And I think that that actually makes the hyper bond a little bit better. Now, I mean, we're still talking pretty much perfection here with the way it cuts it but I can, see, I can see the blade marks on the end grain, and I think that that actually helps the hyper bond to it. Whenever I do my handrail returns for a wall mount handrail, even though it's a big piece of material, I take my utility knife and score the end grain if it's white oak or oak, and then I push those fittings together by hand, and I get great results doing that, and I think it kind of helps it uh, grab on to the wood material a little bit. So I would be curious, those of you who are trying to use this with pine, take a look at your end grain. If it's all glassy, I wouldn't be surprised if the hyper just won't bond to that. But whenever you get a little bit more of a rougher cut on the end grain, I think the glue takes better to it. So keep that in mind. If you're having an issue where it just won't go together, try that out. Maybe try a different blade with less teeth and see how that goes. I hope this video helps you guys out. If you're struggling trying to figure out how to use Hyper, I have another video. It's about a half hour long video where I tried to cover everything about Hyper, explain how it works, show you the inside of a tube, what it looks like, how it works. So check out that video. I think it's called My Secret Weapon. Um, type that in, it's on my channel. I covered it in depth. 
but it kind of breaks my heart when I get these messages from guys who say they bought the gun, they bought the glue, and it was just a waste of money. They couldn't make it work because it's been one of the biggest game changers in my workflow over the years. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in carpentry, and it's been just amazing for me. So if you're struggling with it, I hope this video helps. Make sure you're using a miter clamp. Make sure that you're getting glue from a good source. If you're getting bad tubes off Amazon, again, I basically buy exclusively from gluegun.com and I haven't had any issues with tubes in years. Uh, try that out. Um, and then I showed you how I assemble them and the results I get. Try to copy that. Um, and then if all else fails, take a look at the blade you're using and maybe use a blade with less teeth if you're glassing over your end grain too much, the glue might not be taking to that. So hope this helps. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next video. So I hope this helps. Drop a comment. Let me know if you're having issues. Let me know if you're having success. But thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you on the next video.